Well, welcome to week three of We Are Gathered Here, We Are Gathered Here series. To begin, I'd like to share one of Aesop's fables. There was a certain father who had a family of sons. They were quarreling among themselves. No words he could say did the least bit good. So he cast about in his mind for some illustration, something he could do to teach these boys. One day when the quarreling had been much more violent than usual and each of the sons was moping in a surly manner, he asked one of them to bring him a bundle of sticks. A bundle of sticks perhaps were given to the father very much like this. He handed the bundle to each of his sons and he asked them to see if they could break it. And the sons worked on the bundle but could not break the sticks. The father then untied the bundle and took one of the sticks out. And he handed one to the first boy and then one to the second and he asked them to try to break the stick. The boys broke it easily. My sons, said the father, do you not see how certain it is that if you agree with each other and help each other, it will be impossible for your enemies to injure you? But if you are divided among yourselves, you will be no stronger than a single stick in a bundle. I realize that this simple children's fable could be applied to any number of situations, many of which you're probably imagining right now as you are listening. But there is a simple and powerful lesson from this fable that I want to pass along to you today. We are stronger together than we are alone. The church gathers for strength. There are several passages of scripture that we're going to look at today as we discuss the strength we experience when we gather together. And to begin, I want us to look at Proverbs 14.4. Without the help of an ox, there can be no crop. But with a strong ox, a big crop is possible. The word of God for the people of God. Well, some translations of this uh, proverb say, where there are no oxen, the manger is clean. I think we all understand what that means. If you don't want any mess, uh, then just keep an empty manger and you won't have to clean it out because you can imagine uh, that that would be the case. You can also imagine getting a bunch of oxen together can be a very messy business. And for the record, and if we're honest, Sometimes when we get a lot of us together in the church, things can get messy too. The flip side of this, however, is the beauty of this Proverbs 14.4. All of these oxen together, the sum of them, when you add up all of God's people together together in the church, they can have an incredible harvest. That's the lesson. Oxen are strong. Oxen are stubborn. Oxen are messy. Oxen need a lot of care and direction through the harvest. And so as you can imagine, I'm thinking about this text in relation to people, all of God's people, wherever they are in these times that we are living in. Because Jesus has chosen you, each of you, he wants to use you to build his church. We are what Peter calls living stones being built into a spiritual house. And even though it's messy, even though it's hard, there's a great harvest 
that comes when we pool our collective strengths together for the sake of the gospel. We are stronger when we work together. Uh, we will see a great harvest working together, much more than when we are working alone. Speaking of being alone, let me ask you, what happens when we become lone rangers and we are not connected to our church? What is gained if you remove yourself from fellowship and decide to take the journey of faith all by yourself? As you think about that question, let's read 1 Peter 5, 8 together. Be on your guard and stay away. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion sneaking around to find someone to attack. This is the word of God for the people of God. But, you know, there are two points I want to make to answer the, the Lone Ranger question that come from this text. The, the question of what happens when we disconnect from one another. First of all, Peter compares uh, the hunting style of a lion in this text. And I'm just curious, have you watched any uh, animal shows on Animal Planet or YouTube videos of lions hunting? Uh, if you have, then, then you know that lions are kind of lazy hunters. They prowl around looking for the young, the weak, the hurt, the old, the ones who are split off from the rest of the herd. They never attack the herd. They look at those separated off of the group. Now, when you are a lone ranger, there is much more chance that you will lose the strong connection to God that you get when you are in community. And you will be much more perceptible to the lion prowling around. And the second point is taking a look at Peter's word choice. He specifically says someone. Notice he doesn't say the church or the small group. The enemy, like the lion, is looking for an easy target. He knows that someone, one person split off from the group in fellowship with others, being encouraged and strengthened by others, is a much more difficult prey than someone walking through faith all by themselves. Simply put, there is a truth, there is strength in numbers. When we gather together, there is strength in what we do together. You don't, you know, you don't walk down an alley uh, in the darkness of night all by yourself, and you don't travel through the valley of the shadow of death alone, because when you are part of a community of faith, we are there to support each other and carry each other. God is building a spiritual house, a church out of living stone, we are stronger together. As you consider 1 Peter 5, 8, think about this verse that we're going to look at now from Ecclesiastes 4. Someone might be able to beat up one of you, but not both of you. As the saying goes, a rope made from three stands of cord is hard to break. You know, there are many someones out there who can be overpowered, but two can work together and three are not quickly broken. As an example of this, just consider for a moment that Jesus sent the disciples. Did he send them out alone? No, he always sent them in pairs out to bring the gospel to new people. then you can also think of God looking in on Adam in the garden, realizing that it was not good for him to be alone. And think about all of the leadership modeled in the early church that Paul gives us lists of. All the people who worked together, they were a community. 
Specifically, I'm thinking of the list in Romans 16. There are endless examples to choose from. But the point being, together we see a greater harvest. We can do more ministry when we are together. We are stronger together than we are apart. And let me go back in Ecclesiastes and read the two verses before the one we read a few minutes ago, because they also apply. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. You are better off to have a friend than to be all alone, because then you will get more enjoyment out of what you earn. And if you fall, your friend can help you up. But if you fall without having a friend nearby, you are really in trouble. I know there are people out there today who've been down. Maybe you've had a string of bad luck. You've lost a job, had difficulty paying bills. The pandemic has you sidelined. Maybe you were just heart sick over what is happening in the United States of America. You've lost a loved one recently. Maybe you're the one who's sick and hurt. Maybe you're just tired. Maybe you are weary. But what you need is a little help to get back on your feet. Part of being strong is knowing when it's time to ask for help. How can we help each other today? How can we lift each other up? My challenge to you this week is to find a way to lift someone else's spirits. Be in contact with one another. Support one another on our journey. Can you do that? I think you can. God bless you all. Amen.